Hello, art friends. My name is Fleshwad, and today I have a short, scary video for you. In today's video, I'm going to be reading three stories from r slash short scary stories. Let's begin. I Paint Houses, posted by you slash the underscore unknown underscore Shadet. For me, sleep is an impossibility, something that I have long since given up any hope of ever attaining. In a similar manner to how a child may endeavor to become a superhero, I seek to one day have a full night's rest. Or I did. I have long since accepted this to be beyond the realms of reality. When I close my eyes, whenever I even think of doing so, I see the dead. I see the blonde woman in the baggy sweater, her glassy eyes rolled back in her head, lips taut with a fear and a skin a sheet, betraying the terror that she had experienced in her final moments. I see the young man, an exceptionally close friend, his face locked in a mischievous grin that will forever be sketched in for he will never be able to taste any other emotion again. I see the older gentleman, his eyes scared and confused, as he knew not even of what his final moments were destined to be, his mind too fractured to realize the truth until it had hit and he was never to suffer again. I see all of these and more. They call to me. They beg me for any kind of resolution to their pain, and I never have an answer. I never can have an answer. For them, the hard part is over. And so, when I inevitably find myself unable to sleep yet again, I get up, I dress myself, and I go out. I take my car to the furthest edges of town, where the urban sprawl dies down beaten away by the twisted branches of trees left bare by the onslaught of autumn. And when I can drive no further, I get out, and I guide myself to the clearing, the deepest depths of the woods, where no one else dares travel, that little clearing where the bleak moonlight just barely breaks through the canopy of trees. And I sit down on that stump, left exposed by the fallen trunk resting next to it, and I sit and I look out at the mounds of earth, six of them, then mark the spots. Sometimes I have a cigarette. Sometimes my nerves are too shaken even for that. And yet, I am always calmed. I paint houses, and the only separation from the guilt is missed those whose houses I painted. A visit to a friend's house, posted by you slash deleted. I ring the door and she came to answer. <laughs> Yay, you're here. Yeah, you invited me. Yeah, I'm glad I did. That's strange. She wasn't normally this excited to see me. Then again, she hasn't seen me in weeks because of her surgery, so it's not that weird. Please come in. I have a surprise for you. She said that in a sing-song voice. This isn't like her. Is she drunk? I come in and she has a whole lavish plate of food out for me. Please have a seat. I already prepared dinner. It's a bit early for dinner, but it looks great. She sits down and I see an awful scar going down each of her fingers joining at the wrist and going down her arm. Whoa, what are those? Ugh, my surgery scars are so ugly. They go like this over everything. The doctors say they'll heal soon though, so it's fine. The rest of the visit was great. We had burgers. Well, I had them. She wasn't hungry. We did deliberately bad karaoke. She did some crazy death metal demon voice singing Barbie Girl. It was perfect, but later in the day she tripped on something, 
and the way she fell bent one of her finger bones 180 degrees. Oh my god. <laughs> That'll wake you up in the morning. Ooh. I'll get the first aid kit. Should I call a doctor? I sprinted into her bedroom, where I knew there was a first aid box. Wait, I'm fine. I don't need the first aid. Ugh. But by that point, I was already in there. As soon as I turned on the lights, I saw it. An entire skeleton worth of bones in a pile on the floor. I turned around and she was suddenly right behind me. So close, I could feel her breath on my face. Her finger was perfectly fine now. You shouldn't have done that. She put her arm on my shoulder and it bent like rubber. I tried to run but I bumped into something and it scraped off a chunk of my stomach skin falling onto her bedroom carpet. Since when was I so weak? I was hoping we could have prepared you more. Who's we? And prepared me for what? The food made you ripe for cutting. The karaoke let us hear and mimic your voice. Now anyone can be you. At least for a second. I just wish we could have done more. You can come out now. Then she locked the door and something clawed out from under her bed. It had the exact shapes of a skeleton. Only it was pure flesh. And it was exactly my height. This is a bonus story because I had contacted this narrator a long time ago and then I never caught on Reddit again and they did give me permission to read it. But because I was going to use this in a Mother's Day video, I had already made the video without using their story. So since I have permission anyways, I figured I'd include it in this video because it's also a very short story and it's pretty creepy in my opinion. Ghostly Mom Posted by you slash Mr. Amazing 28 so, I've had two instances where my mom has woken me up in the middle of the night for no reason. Only problem is, when I looked, there was absolutely no one there. The first time, which was about three years ago, she woke me up aggressively and kept telling me to wake up and shoving me. My back was facing her and when I turned around and opened my eyes, it was as if I caught a glimpse of her but she disappeared. At the time, I was struggling with insomnia and sleep paralysis, so it really freaked me out, but I took it as an effect of that. Recently, a few weeks ago, three years later, a similar thing happened, only this time, she shouted my name, standing at my bedroom door. I immediately woke up and looked at her and shouted, What? I saw her, but as I blinked my eyes a bit, she vanished, like a figment of my imagination. I went back to sleep, but felt uneased with the fact that I had just shouted, what, at an empty space. Was it my imagination? Is my room haunted by some ghost slash demon that takes the form of my mother? I don't know. All I do know is, it freaks me out. I lay in bed some nights, waiting for her to return, but there's nothing. Just a silence. And that was all of the stories I have for you in this video. Adding on to that last story, I actually did have sleep paralysis. So that last story kind of hits very close to home. I actually was going to make a video with audio compilations of me explaining my sleep paralysis dreams because towards the end I did, rec like as soon as I woke up, I recorded what I could remember. So if you want to see that video, I still have all, all of the footage, 
and I could just like draw in the background while I replay me telling the story of like my sleep paralysis experience because it was pretty crazy. Um, maybe I'll make that video. I, I've been wanting to make that video for a long time, like years, literal years. So if sleep paralysis interests you, let me know and I'll work on that video. But yeah, that was all the stories. A little bit about the drawing. I actually came up with this sketch based on a song by a band I've been really into lately called Destroy Boys. And the song is titled Honey I'm Home, you should listen to it. It's kind of about this girl who's in this relationship, but she struggles intensely with herself and then also with trust in the relationship. It's a very good song. And when I was listening to it, I kind of had this image of a girl, but like she's like turning half into a house. I know it's kind of silly, but I had to sketch it out. So once I had sketched it out, I kind of wanted to turn the design into a t-shirt, but I don't know. Once I started playing around with it, I wasn't too much feeling it as a t-shirt. Maybe I'll add it to my shop someday. If you guys like it, let me know if anyone really wants it as a t-shirt. Here's some like mock-ups that I did. I don't know, I just, something about it was throwing me off, but I do love the drawing. So I figured I could at least read a couple of scary stories dealing with houses in the background while I draw. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Um, the Drawing Your Creepypasta OCs video is coming out on Friday. Don't miss it turn on my post notifications. I don't know how YouTube works anymore. It's been a while. <laughs> Anyways, hope you liked the video. Hope you liked the stories. As always, all of these stories are linked in the description box in the order that I read them. If you like them, take the time to visit the authors on Reddit, upvote their stories, comment on their stories, let them know, because I really super appreciate them letting me read their stories on my channel. Make sure to like the video if you haven't liked it already, it helps me out a lot. Comment something, anything down below, that helps me out a lot. And subscribe if you haven't. Thank you so so much for watching, art friends. Until the next video, bye.